Hi everybody, it's Sean from Our Vision Nomadic Living and today's project is going to be basically rebuilding the suspension parts on our 346 FLR Highland Ridge Roamer. Angie and I have owned the trailer since September of 2016 and in that time, I just added it up, we've put 17,263 miles on it. Some may ask how I've kept track of that miles. I keep a log in the trailer and every time I move the trailer, I track the mileage and, and indicate it in my log. That way I know how many miles is on the trailer, which I think is an important thing when you're dealing with some maintenance issues. And this is one of those. So installing this kit has been on my mind for some time. And today we're going to tackle that project. First, let me show you a little bit about the parts I've purchased. Okay, so I just opened up the box and this is what we've got. The Moride CRE 3000 tandem axle suspension parts and the Moride upgraded wet bolt shackle kit. So I've gone ahead and pre-assembled uh, some jack stands, a couple of floor jacks. I do have a couple of bottle jacks. Um, I'm not going to show getting the trailer up off the ground because um, I'm working on this by myself. I've removed all four tires and I have uh, supporting the axles and they're not jacked up on the axles. I'm supporting the axles with two floor jacks. And I can do that so that I can better float the axles and get the shackles in the position where I need them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, take off that Equiflex centerpiece and go from there. But see, look at, look at how that wiggles right there within the eye of that leaf spring again i'm sure the, the i'm sure the bushings are just shot so the the inside nuts here on these shackles are 11 sixteenths and the outside are 13 sixteenths now the way that these things supposedly come from the factory is that these bolts are knurled and grip on the inside of that but i have to tell you look it, they they're spinning they're just just worn out. I'm just gonna gonna pop the inside nuts off and then take that shackle off and then this this piece along with these two bolts should actually slip right out. You can see the knurling where that is supposed to be that's supposed to be attached and it's kind of stripped out there. So I just wanted to show the comparison between the old and the new Moride Heavy Duty. I mean, look at the thickness of those shackles. And of course, we've got the the brass bushings instead of the the plastic bushings that that came in this. So we'll just need to press these out, pop them out, and then the new the new bushings will go in. So the shoulder bolt right here. Um, again knurled into this hanging bracket boy I, had, I struggled getting that out finally what I did was I went ahead and I went and got my ball joint press and uh, put the nut back on it and I pressed it out um, anyways just just a little tip um, that I've run into all right we'll keep on keeping on Junk. All right, so nice, huh? Look at that. Worn right, right. Just plastic bushings. Whose idea is that? Wait. 
again. Look at that. Now, I do have 17,000 miles on the trailer. But, but who puts plastic bushings in? Just seems silly to me. Let's get finish getting this off of there. And I'll tell you what, this bolt right here sure gave me gave me some issues. As you can see again, knurled right here. And uh, boy, it didn't want to come out of there. See how I use that to press this side out. and smacking it with a hammer. I can see that it's worn in, worn here again too. Look at that. All right. There's two trains of thought on this. Some people say to put these back together the way you have them. That way it's easier to grease from the outside. Or you can put them in this way. Um, that way your tires aren't throwing crap up on your grease certs. I am going to go ahead and put them in this way. That one certainly came out easier. Well, let's lower that axle down. Pop out the piece of garbage plastic bushing. And there we go. So we've got one of our brand new ones. We're gonna put some lube on it. Make it easier sticking back in. Grab our new bushing in. Ready to go. All right, work our way in. Tell me when it's there, okay, folks? I'm a little. Patience is a virtue. Read that somewhere. That looks pretty close. Mm 
but got the back side. Now I'm going to do the very front side, and then we're going to do the center, and then we'll go back and torque everything down. All right, so here we are in the front of the the front axle, the front of the front axle shackle, just like before. I'm gonna gonna lube this up. all that bushing. Hey, tell me when we're even, okay? The CR3000 already has the, uh, the brass inserts on the unit, so I'm gonna have some spares. I'm gonna put the nut on the back. Lube. Lube is our friend. Pre-greasing. And if you don't have a bushing tool like I do here. I understand that a 14 millimeter socket's the right size to press these in. I think that was probably the easy one. Big shackles, yes. Ooh, ooh. That's Tim Tim Allen style right there. I wonder if Tim Allen helped come up with this. Of course, you know what my wife's gonna say is you should have painted first, honey. I'm not gonna tighten these all the way up, just Alright, now the fun part is, like I said, this back one's probably going to be the fun one. Grease, grease, grease. Remember, patience is a virtue. Oh, look at that. Now we need our, our big, sh big shackle on the other side. Oh, I'm pretty excited to have this. Oops. this going on our trailer I'll tell you okay now we want to torque the bolts down which should seat our shoulder bolts which means I need to go get my torque wrench all right well I just walked in and read the instructions once again to verify it and it said to torque the torque them to 50 foot pounds I, I guess this is the disadvantage of putting the zerts on the outsides trying to get in here to torque those. The advantage is I don't have to take the wheels off in order to grease the shackles. He said I know that there's been some discussion about which way to go and interestingly enough the instructions say at customer's preference. Well, this is my preference. Click. Of course, like anything else, I will double check these after we go not very far. There we go. And just moving the. There we go. There we go. 
All right. And one more. Click. Okay, other than a little bit awkward at times, um, it really wasn't too bad. Like I said, having the, the ball joint press made it certainly easier to take the those shouldered bolts out of the hangers. Probably all total, I would say, um, it'll probably take me about another hour, especially now where I've done one side. Well, it's a little windy, so hopefully that won't be too bad, but there we have it. All put in, very, very satisfied, both sides done. And here we have all the old parts. Just look at how those plastic bushings had worn. You know, it makes me wonder um, in, when I see people that have their trailers that have a broken leaf spring, if this isn't partly, partially to blame. Um, because if the bushings here have worn out, and then, you know, the bolts start wearing on the leaf eyes, the eyelets themselves on the leaf springs. Certainly makes sense that that, that could crack and it's just loose. I am so glad that I got that, that project done. And then, of course, had uh, six, six bushings left over. Um, because the CRE 3000 already came with with bushings inserted in in it so so I got some extra parts so overall probably about four hours worth of work maybe about two hours aside I, I kind of take my time I'm not in a big hurry of course one of the big things that was a little hinky was getting that great big fifth wheel put up in the air with all of the four tires off you always have a you know just a little bit of a concern of having it come down but we braced it appropriately and got her done if you like this video please give us a thumbs up if you haven't already please subscribe and follow angie jazz and i on our journey thanks a lot